Hi guys, happy Tuesday. I was so excited this morning when I woke up and saw that I finally hit the 10K subscriber mark. Thank you so much for everyone in the community that contributes so much to this channel. You guys are always sharing information and your experiences with doing Turo and doing all types of other things and it's so helpful for everyone. So thank you, thank you, thank you for making this channel what it is. And as always, I'm gonna continue to put in the work and share my experience with you guys as much as humanly possible in all my different endeavors. So, um, you know, just kind of diving back into the normal routine. One of the things that I was thinking about because we're just a handful of days away is the new insurance option packages. And I was looking at the marketplace today, looking at different cars, different price points. And one of the things I've been talking about a lot in my past couple of videos is how I've been raising my pricing. And so far the market is supporting the high higher pricing, which is pretty exciting to me to see that that trend is um, sort of continuing on. And again, it hasn't been enough time to know for sure, but we'll continue to watch that and I'll be reporting back. Some of the cars though that I was looking at today that I think um, these insurance packages are a little bit unfair to um, are the cars that are priced a bit lower and so I did the math for you guys on my computer screen I'm going to show you in a second um, so with these new packages I don't think it's really fair to the cars that can't get higher day rates just because of maybe the age of the car or the type of car that it is and the thing is it might be the case that renting through Turo might not be the best value for the end user, for the renter, right? So oftentimes for the more economical cars that are priced, you know, in the 30 to $40 day rate range might be a better deal to rent from a place like Enterprise. And that's kind of what I've seen. I've seen you guys talk about it in the comment section as well. And if you go on you know, one of the major rental car websites, you can kind of see that for yourself as well. So with the trip fees and the insurance fees on Turo, when you rent a $40 car, it can really add up and you might find yourself between the 60 to $80 per day range on an economical car. And the value is just really not quite frankly there for the renter. So if you are on the platform and you have cars that are priced within that range and you don't really know if your cars can get a higher price range, you really want to make sure that you can thoroughly look at the math and know exactly um, what the best way to go is for your insurance option. So I'm going to show you guys how I did the math and then hopefully that could help you determine uh, what's the best route for you. But again, even for myself doing the math and I was looking at cars in that range, I can't really see how you can go any other route other than being on that 60-40 split where you don't have that deductible and you don't have that variable of incidents taking place and having issues and having to come out of pocket for that. Um, and then again, because you are paying so much more in insurance, you have to really evaluate for yourself if it's really worth it for you to have the platform, the car on the platform. And again, only you can decide that based on your situation. So let's take a look. All right, guys, so hopefully you can see this pretty decently. Just kind of made this on the fly. I should really invest into a whiteboard so I can show you more pricing plans and how numbers break down, which I will do soon. Okay, so we're looking at a $40 per day car, which there's lots of those on the platform. And in our first row up here, we have our new insurance packages ranging between 60 to 85%. In our second row, we have all the different deductibles. Now on the 60% package, you have a zero deductible, 70, you have a $250 deductible, 75, 750. On the 80% package, you have a $1,625 deductible. And then on the 85% package, you have a whopping $2,500 deductible. Now, remember when you have a deductible, it doesn't mean that you pay Turo $250 every time an incident or an accident happens. It's just that say if you're on the 70% plan, there's some damage that happens to your car in that amount of $500. Turo is going to deduct $250 from the cost of the repairs. So meaning 
the payout to you is only going to be $250 because you are responsible for that $250 deductible towards the cost of your repairs. So that's how it works. Um, okay, so if you have a $40 car, so we take 60% of 40, your take as a host is $24. And what I did over here to the left, you'll see is that I times it by 10 days and 20 days. Um, I sort of just picked those numbers because I feel like if you're kind of doing Doing this part-time and you know not really aggressively approaching your listings you can pretty easily get 10 days out of the month for uh, rental days and if you're really putting some good effort into it you can definitely get 20 days out of the month um, if you're really watching your listings adjusting your pricing and offering a great experience to your guests and of course that can go even higher to a maximum of you know 30 or 31 days you can definitely be booked out for an entire month at a time so if you're on the 60% package, you're bringing in $240 per month or on the high, roughly about $480 per month. Now, again, like I said, you know, you have to really evaluate for yourself as a host if these numbers are really worth it to you. And maybe they are. Maybe you're just looking to make some extra change on the side and this is sufficient for what you're looking to do. That can absolutely be the case, but you always have to evaluate your opportunity versus opportunity cost and see if it's worth it. That's how I've always ran my businesses so that's kind of how I evaluate things now it gets interesting when you go on to the higher um, packages on the insurance options where you as a host are paying less towards insurance so on the 70% you have a $250 deductible and at $40 a day at a 70% split you're taking home $28 per day okay that comes out to either $280 if you're doing a min minimum of 10 days or $560 if you're doing a maximum of 20 days. And of course that can vary. I'm just giving you guys a range. Now let's just say in a month you have one incident that takes place. You know, the damage is again, let's say like $500. You have a $250 deductible. Now that could pretty close to wiping out your minimum amount of days. So it could wipe out an entire month's worth of revenue if you have to come out of pocket for that deductible. Now, if you do the maximum amount of days, then you could still have um, about roughly half the profit of this $560 if you came out of pocket with this $250 deductible. So again, you have to evaluate for yourself if you find yourself in that type of situation is this worth it? Is it still worth it to roughly take home, you know, two hundred and you know eighty dollars or whatever the math works out to? If you come out of pocket two hundred fifty dollars for a deductible, and now that's just considering if you have only one incident in the month. Um, yes, there are months where you have multiple incidents. It does happen, and that's the thing about these deductibles, where it can get really dangerous when the deductibles are quite high like this like 1625 2500 or even the 750 is you have no way of knowing how many incidents can take place in a given month and how that's going to affect your profit margins, your bottom line, right? Can you end up in the negative? Absolutely. If we look at the 75% package right here, say your maximum take for the month is $600, but you had a pretty major incident that month where that required you to come 750 out of pocket to cover um, that portion of the deductible towards the damages, then you're already in the negative $150 for that month. So again, evaluating if on these different packages, could it be worth it, particularly if you have a low day rate, like $40, do you have that space? So if I was a host on the platform and I had cars that were at $40 per day, I think I would have no other option other than being at the 60% revenue split. Again, that's just one person's opinion. That's my opinion. That's kind of where I would stay. Now, my cars that I have a part of my fleet are priced much higher than $40 per day, and I'm still going to be sticking at that 60% revenue split. And again, 
Not to sound like a broken record, but we'll have to see if the market can support that higher pricing to see if it's worth it. Um, at this price point for me personally, if I had cars at this day rate, again, this is personally for my financial situation and my financial goals, this would not be worth it on either end. So on the low or the high, um, I just, you know, for the amount of work that you have to put in to maintain cars and provide a great experience for me personally, I would want to make a little bit more money than that on a given car. And I also believe that for the most part, of course, not 100%, but for the most part, it almost doesn't matter what type of car you have. They pretty much require the same amount of work, which is why I've chosen the cars that I do have because I can find bigger margins in them. So I wanted to work the math out for you guys. Um, if I were you and you have different cars at different day rates, I would lay out uh, something that looks just like this so that you can really see the numbers visually and kind of decipher for yourself if it's worth it. Okay, so hopefully you guys found that walkthrough somewhat helpful. Now, if you're thinking about what card to add to your fleet, this is really how you want to analyze your numbers and, you know, kind of get an idea of do your research on Turo and see what type of a day rate you can get for your car and then break down the math because that's going to be very, very important. Please don't go into this blindly, not knowing exactly, you know, what your numbers are going to look like because you're going to put in work and effort and later on, you're going to have a negative experience if you find that it's not worth it so you want to go into it really with the right type of mindset so i want to give you an example my corvette recently during the midweek it cleared about 300 dollars, and then over the weekend it cleared about 500 dollars. that was my take home so i had about a 800 dollar week on my corvette if i can get 800 dollars every single week on my corvette that is a great margin on that car for a car that has a car payment of you know roughly around 750 or 800 dollars if you're financing it and if you get a good deal on it so that's sort of the type of cars that i'm looking at where i can see that type of margin and it really makes the work worth it um and then on top of that you know of course it is true that all cars have expenses right so you have your cost of doing business of just being on the platform and then you have your expenses outside of that one of the things that i've realized over time with sort of the higher end luxury cars is that people really have a certain expectation they really expect these cars to be clean and to be in excellent shape to be detailed and to be well maintained overall and that has a cost to it now the thing that has changed about our world today that you really have to be in tune with is that now people are expecting even the 40 dollar per day cars to be cleaned and detailed and sanitized which has almost an identical cost that a luxury car would have because of everything that has gone on with the pandemic and people being just so health conscious so you have to take that into account when you're thinking about what car to list because if you're you know spending you whatever it might be 15 to 25 dollars uh, cleaning a car that's 40 dollars per day it might not really be worth it but if you're getting a higher dollar amount on a car that has more margins then having that additional expense of cleaning and maintaining could definitely be worth it and one of the things that actually just today that I switched my listings over to is something that you know I would also recommend for you guys because I think that the renters totally understand this and find value in this is that I have really emphasized a 25 to 35 dollar cleaning fee per trip um, because I'm making sure that the cars are disinfected they're sanitized using actual antibacterial products that they're washed and cleaned inside and out before every trip every hot spot is wiped down and so that the renter can really rest assured that they're getting something that is fully cleaned and detailed and sanitized and they don't have to worry i think people find value in that and they definitely don't mind paying that cleaning fee which i've been getting on almost every single rental so just imagine you're getting um i think we get 90 percent of the trip extra so that comes out to uh, on 25 dollars. i think it's 22 something so imagine getting that extra 22 something on every single trip especially when you have a higher number of cars that money really adds up and i think that people don't realize if you push those extras 
there are margins in that, especially because our take on that is 90%. So really, really think about that and take that into account when you're trying to figure out what type of car you wanna list on Turo. Um, all right, guys, on that note, that's it for me. Again, thank you so much for all your guys' support. Uh, I wanted to do something fun today, but I wasn't feeling so hot. So hopefully this week I'll do something fun with one of the cars and bring, you know, a little bit of a different video to the channel. Um, but on that note, that's it. Thanks again, guys. Once again, my name is Saima. This is Saima's Experience. And if you like this channel, be sure to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Saima's Experience. I'm always posting stuff about rentals and how my day to day is going. All right, guys, take care. Talk soon.